Welcome back to another episode of Code Porn, sponsored by viewers like you through our Patreon page. Over the last few years of being a consultant, I've done many code reviews to track down bugs. And most of the time, the biggest bugs were caused by the simplest of problems. So I'm going to cover three tips for improving your code quality and preventing unnecessary problems. Now, after I explain these, you might think that they're really too obvious to even mention, but the sad truth is a lot of developers, juniors and seniors alike, simply fail to think beyond what the code is supposed to do. Yes, I do at times do this as well. When we write a piece of code, we know what it needs to do, and the first thing we do is write the code to do its job. From there, we tend to move on, forgetting to account for usage outside of the code's operational boundaries. Let's take a look at this simple method. All it does is take in a first and last name, capitalize in both, then join them together. As simple as this is, it's very much a method I've dealt with in production code. Now, even though there are only three lines of code, it's flawed. If you look at the first usage of this method, you can imagine that things will work out as expected. This is usually how we test our code too. We write it to do its job, and then we make sure it does the job under expected usage. But what happens when the usage is unexpected, like when a null value is passed in? Well, this simple method is gonna fail. The reason it fails is because it's expecting a specific state, but doesn't account for an invalid state. So the first step to improve code quality is to use guards. A guard simply ensures that the state is valid and meets expectations of the operational boundaries in order to protect the code from unnecessary failure. Implementing a guard can be as simple as using an if statement to check for certain conditions, or you can use code contracts or validation library like Fluent Guard. It honestly doesn't matter. If we add in two simple if statements, we can protect this method from unnecessary failure. In this case, we're throwing exceptions if either of the parameters is null. But you can also provide reasonable defaults too. For example, setting the null strings to an empty string, which will also protect the method from failure. What you do will vary and depends on what you're building. In this case, it was a simple method for making a customer's name look nice for display on a web page. So providing a reasonable default is acceptable because at worst, the customer's name will look funny on the page. But if you are providing this code in an API, let's say, you would probably want to throw an exception. In this example, we're only checking for null strings. You can, of course, check for whatever you need to to ensure a non-exceptional state. The next tip is in a similar vein as the first, so let's look at another example. This one represents a very common task. Fetch some data and use link to filter or transform it. But this seemingly simple code is susceptible to at least four potential problems. The first problem we have is the code is assuming that a non-null result will come back from the web service call. And if we tried to use it in any way, if it is null, we'll end up with exceptions. We want to always check the validity of data we're consuming. Never trust data. So a quick fix is to check and see if results is null, and if so, do something about it. Now we can fail this method, or we can simply provide a reasonable default, such as an empty array, and then let the method continue on. Next up is an annoying problem with the simple fix. In the link query, we're using the value property in the where clause predicate. As it's written, the code is assuming that the value property will never be null. Of course, if it is, it'll throw an exception. A simple fix is to just add an additional predicate to handle null values if necessary. The last two errors can occur in the projection in which we're dealing with properties that have nullable data types. This can lead to really annoying debug sessions because the exceptions occur inside of the projection but are thrown outside of it with no specific information such as line number or property name. So if you have a large projection, it can be painful to figure out where the issue is. Solving these issues are a little trickier, but still doable. Nullable types should be identified up front so you can handle them. Usually we'll want to provide reasonable defaults in these cases. Defaults can be handled in the projection or done before the projection using lets. If you're not familiar with using let, then check out the episode on using the let and into keywords. 
Another option when there's a lot of complex logic is to create a builder method, which handles the creation and error handling logic outside of the link query. This helps encapsulate the logic, clean up the link query, and also makes it easier to write the code in general. However, this won't work in all scenarios. For example, if you're doing a projection from an entity framework query. The point here is that we should be checking that whatever data we plan to use is first in a state in which it can be used. So the last tip for improving your code quality is to simply stop trying to be clever. Just write the code as simple as possible and don't overcomplicate things. Not everything needs to be async, not everything needs to use dependency injection, and not everything needs to be abstracted. The more complex you make the code, the more prone it will be to bugs and the harder it will be to understand and troubleshoot later. I've seen so many examples of overly complex code that developers were highly proud of, but at the end of the day, they were unnecessary and just caused more problems than it was worth. Use common sense, make sure the code works under expected usage, and gracefully handles unexpected usage. All right, that's it for this episode. Be sure to subscribe to our channel, and if you liked the video, click that like button or visit our Patreon page and show your support. Thanks for watching.